Let's collect our spent zinnia seeds and marigold seeds. I went out into my garden and put the seeds into paper bags for they could dry and not mold. I love using zinnias in flower bouquets during the summer, and they bloom all summer even in our hot weather. I put painter's tape on several of the pretty colored ones while they were blooming, for I would know which ones I wanted to keep. Hi everyone, Patty here with a fun way to keep our dried seed heads. Marigolds are so good for your garden, and this year I made inks with my marigolds, which made me want to grow more for next year, so I didn't pull up the plants until I could get seeds from them. Make sure you put them into a paper bag to dry for they don't mold. Label the bag with the type of seeds you are collecting and the date. When I got the seeds into the house, I pulled them apart and laid them out on a flat surface where my pets could not get into them. This takes a little time to get the stems and husk separated from the seeds. Plus, they will dry quicker if you separate the seeds and take the time to clean them up now, then you will be ready to make the seed packets and stuffing the packets when your seeds are dried. Maybe seeing my messy craft room wasn't the best shot while videoing, but I have pets and I don't want my seeds to be all over the place while they dry. This may take a day or depending on how many seeds you are drawing and how warm your place is, you are storing them. I show later why it's so important for me to dry my seeds up high like this. I do the same thing for the zinnia heads. These are much bigger and need to be separated even more. Clean the stems and petals from the seeds. You can just rub the flower heads between your fingers and the seeds will fall away from the stem and spent petals. Wow, just look at all of those seeds. We will be able to plant an acre of flowers next year and make several seed packets to add to our journals and give away as gifts to friends and family. This kitten is a stray we took in when we found it in our backyard with his sibling ran over on the road. He has become a real help in my craft room, not. Zinnia heads where the seeds are located are in a cone shape. They are hundreds of seeds in this head. My favorite color of zinnia is the green envy. My daughter buys me a packet every year, but this year I marked my favorite with painter's tape before they were spent. While these seeds dry either in a paper bag or a flat surface, we will begin our seed packets. I have this stamp from many years ago from Stamping Up. I don't know if it's still available, but it's probably one of the first stamps I bought when I started making cards. I made a template of a coin envelope on the paper by tracing another coin envelope I had and adjusted the size to fit my stamp. I want to cut the center out so I can add a piece of see-through material and be able to see my seeds. I love my 5-inch Fiskars Easy Action Micro Tip Scissors. You can really get into tight spaces and it makes it so easy to cut the center out of this stamped piece of paper. I used a 28-pound printer paper for stamping the seed pack onto. I have some thin gauze material that I will use to cover the hole after I cut it all out. This thin gauze material was wrapped up with some interface webbing and I liked it better for the centerpiece than that pink. You need something fine enough that the seeds won't fall through the webbing. So the 
way I start with zinnias is with the center portion of it, which are just these upside down U shape. And then I go around and start with the petals. Petals in the back are going to be taller in this case. And then the petals in the front will have kind of just this fluffy dog ear looking petal shape. Petals at the closer to the center. Each row is going to be getting farther and farther. The petals will get longer and longer. And then that's going to start creating a rounded shape because if you could see from those reference photos, zinnia are pretty round looking and they're constantly like their petals grow from the inside and push the older ones out and so that's kind of what I'm trying to capture with this and so as you can see with each row for some of the seed packets I tried to draw some marigolds and zinnias to add to the front of the packets which I show later I went on to YouTube and found Franny Beard who made drawing zinnias look easy you can cut pictures from a magazine or use a stamp or try your hand at watercolor you can just do about anything. One of the packets I just tried to use pretty handwriting. You do you. I like to doodle and color with some watercolors. I even use some of my marigold ink I made on the marigold doodles and seed packet. Don't stress over this step because this is what makes the seed packets unique and from your garden. I stamped my seed packet stamp onto a piece of 28 pound copy paper. I left enough room all around to draw a coin envelope shape on this packet. You could just stamp it in the center of your page and fold over one side of the stamp or the other and glue around the edges. I wanted this to look more like a coin envelope look for my seed packet. I then watercolor the leaves on the stamp, or you could use colored pencils or your stamp on your stamped image. Use what you have and make these seed packets your own creation. I do love to go around the seed packets with walnut distress ink to give them a vintage feel. If you cut out the center, make sure you ink around it also. I have used some small stamps I had that look like miniature seed packets for the closure of my envelopes. If you don't have the stamps, you can use buttons or small circles or actual stamps. I will show several different ideas as we get into making these. I think I make three or four different types of seed packets. After I fold these edges on my coin envelope, I go around all the edges with walnut stain distress ink. And again, make sure you go across the 
um, center where you cut out the hole. This one I just gave a more vintage look to the whole piece, but I do go back and add a little ink to it later too. I like having some where there's just not much color and that they will match anything that I'm working on in a journal at a later time. We purchased a Cricut, or do you say cry cut machine, a couple years ago, and my grandson cut these specimen cards out. Honestly, it is the only thing we have used this machine for. You will need some acetate sheets, or I use a small plastic bags for my centers of the specimen cards to add my seeds to. I watercolored splashes of color on the specimen card to give them some interest and ink all the edges. Have any old envelopes with the window in them? Cut a portion of this envelope. Keep in the window so you will be able to see your seats. We will decorate these up a bit later and sew around them to close them all up so our seeds don't come out. Again, I'm distressing all the edges with walnut distress ink. This style of seed packet is making the easiest envelope you've ever made. You will need a square piece of paper, or this one is an old book page. I also have a piece of paper that I've stamped all over, and I cut that into a square. The size of your paper will determine the size of the finished envelope. To make a square with a piece of paper, just fold the one side to the other corner and cut off the extra. Now you have a square to fold for your envelope. Print side out and fold back into a triangle. I had to see what my template was to remember this four-step fold. You do want to find the center of the triangle so that your next fold is past it by a fourth of an inch or so. I don't measure, but make a little mental note of where that center is for folding. Use a bone folder and fold all of the edges with a sharp crease. Fold the top flap down over the other side and tuck your two corners into each other. See how the two bottom pieces fit into each other nicely? This holds the envelope together. I use my little seed packet stamps to glue down onto the envelope to keep the flap in place. Make sure and only put glue on the bottom portion of the little seed stamps so you can use it as a closure. coin envelopes I'm going to glue the centers in. One I use the sewing interface webbing material and the other one I use the acetate sheets. If you have a bunch of the baggies you could always use them. I show the baggies when I'm making the specimen packets. I would let this dry before you glue the coin envelope together or the glue may close up your seed packet if you're using a porous material like interface webbing.
I bought a large pack of these baggies, and when my grandson made the specimen cards on the cry cut, I had him make the opening the same size so I could use these baggies. I want to add some stamps to the seed packets to add a little more interest and make them look like specimen cards. I bought I have this Tim Holtz Field Notes stamps. This may be my favorite collection of stamps and my go-to when making my journals, so I know they will match whatever I'm working on. I have black archival ink and stamp all around the specimen card and the window envelope. Just random stamping and not worrying about if the image comes out completely or not. I think this just adds to the vintage look. Try not to get any ink on the window envelope when you're stamping it. I didn't tape it off or get too crazy about where my stamp images went. I didn't have to do it to the envelope I had made from the stamped image printer because it already had all of these stamped images all over it. Just keep randomly stamping. I'm just trying to find the ones that are small enough that will fit on this small area. Just keep filling in all the blank areas. This old book page, I just randomly put it around the outside of the edges because I'm going to add these little doodle drawings that I had drawn and watercolored. So let's add our doodle drawings onto a couple of these envelopes and get ready to stuff our pieces with our dried seeds. Of course, I distress ink around the edges of the drawings and cut them to fit the envelopes. Well, maybe we should cut them first and then distress the ink around the edges. Marigolds may be my favorite flower for collecting and replanting seeds. They deter bugs in your garden. They make beautiful ink and smash flowers for artwork. Plus, they're just pretty. Okay, they do smell. Maybe that's why the bugs don't like them. I think I drew three zinnia doodles and three marigold. I may not use them all now, but I can go back and use them later. I picked the largest image for the biggest envelope and glue the drawing onto the front, making sure the flower is going the right direction with the top flap of the envelope. Yep, it's going the right direction.
this seed packet, oh, that's the one that I glued together, so I'm trying to open it back up. This seed packet, I'm going to add a piece of acetate to cover the opening. But like I said, you could use some of those little baggies that we had used on the specimen cards, too. I like that bottom flap to be the last piece I glue. Leave your top open so we can add our seeds later. I debated on putting a doodle drawing onto the seed packet, but decided against it. Glue your baggie to your specimen card around three edges, leaving the top portion of the specimen card open so you can get your seeds in. You could also use the acetate sheets for this instead of baggies if you don't have the baggies. I just have a large bunch of them, so I thought they would be handy. On this window envelope, I thought I would take a piece of an old book page and fit it into the envelope to know where to write the words Xenia in my best handwriting. I thought I would glue that inside, but once I got the seeds into the envelope, you couldn't see the word, so I made an extra little tag for it also. I like the vintage color of the old book page to go with my vintage looking seed packets. It just needs a little bit more. So at another angle, I wrote the year 2023 on the Xenia Seeds label. I decided I need another envelope made with the square book page. Here I show how I crease the bottom of the triangle to make the bottom flaps go past the center crease by just a bit. These are so easy to make, and I drew three zinnias and three marigolds, so I wanted to make more envelopes to be able to have the same number of seed packets of each type of seed. And of course, I go around it again with some Walnut Distress ink to vintage it up a little bit. See how you tuck those two bottom flaps into each other?
that just makes it stay nice and closed so easily. We are ready to fill our packets. I printed out on the computer Xenia Seeds and Marigold Seeds in a font that would fit my envelopes and packets, keeping them about an inch to an inch and a half in size. Cut these out and distress ink around the edges before gluing them onto the packets. You could handwrite the names on the seed packets. I use both. Some I did with my own handwriting and others with the typed. I just keep cutting them until I can get them to fit into the areas that I wanted them to fit on my seed packets. Distress your edges and glue them onto the packets. I always lay mine all out first and decide which is going to go on which packet and if I want to handwrite on some of them and which ones to write on and which ones to use the typed image. Those I had used my own handwriting on. Now I know where I want all my labels, so I glue them into position. Making sure if I have two of the seed packet stamps that I made into the coin envelopes, I make one with marigold and one with zinnias. I add a little of my handmade marigold ink to this seed packet. I love making inks with my flowers. My favorite this summer was making iris ink. The purple iris ink makes the prettiest ink ever. I think I have a couple seed packets in each type, so I can do one with marigold seeds and one with zinnia seeds. Start adding your seeds to your packets. Don't overstuff them or they don't lay flat and would add too much bulk to your journal page. Just a few heads will look nicely in our packets. These seed heads have dried for several days now so I know they are good and dry and will not mold in my little seed packets. I find all of the which ones are I'm going to fill with marigold seeds and separate those so that I make sure I get the right seeds in the right envelope.
it would be fun to make a seed packet with both types of seeds in it and you could have that to give away that would be fun too I didn't think about that while I was labeling them Keep filling up your bags, little seed packets, with your seeds. Two of the envelopes, I'm going to have to put another kind of closure on them. I didn't want them all to have those little stamps with the seed packets on them. I, I like doing different things for each one of them. And the old envelope window, I took it to my sewing machine and sewed all the way around the edges. Zinnia seeds are large, so they fill up the envelope quickly. I think these little seed packets will be such a fun addition to my journals and to give away as gifts. This envelope, I thought I would could add a button for the closure, but I had already added the seeds, which made it a little harder to sew, and I ended up gluing the button also to make sure it would close tightly. I'm just sewing this button onto the two flaps that I have put together here on the bottom, not all the way through the seed packet. And then I'll just tie my ends so I can have the two tied ends showing. Have you ever used these self-threading needles? I love them. I just didn't think that was tight enough, so I went back and added just a little bit of glue to the bottom of that button. The next envelope I just glued the button on, but I really liked how the thread through the button looked. Look at all of these seed packets. 
we made today for really a no cost project and using what I had. Here's where I went back and added the label to this seed packet because you can't see where I had wrote zinnias seeds on that pretty old book page. I cut the baggie on this specimen card and the other one I used washi tape and I just folded it over and taped it to the back side. I thought it would be easier to open and close the seed packet with the baggie top on instead of cutting it off like I did on the first one. The washi tape idea was such a good one, I decided to use it to do the coin envelopes for closing them. I love how these turned out, and I can't wait to do my flip through of my next journal, Garden Paradise 2, with the eco dyed pages and rust dyed papers and materials with pages from a beautiful garden book. I'll add a couple seed packets and some fun garden sticks I made. Have a great day, and thanks for watching!